take my sleeve. Pull it back. Pull it back. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with all of you. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, you honor me by your presence here as we mark 50 years plus one as a priest and 25 years plus one as a bishop. Distinguished members of the ecumenical community, I'm especially happy that you are here present. While this is a Mass of Thanksgiving, we all know that tomorrow marks the 20th anniversary of that, that terrible day, the terrorist attack on the United States in which nearly 3,000 people perished. I knew some of those who perished that terrible day. It changed our country and it changed our world. Let us pause for a moment of prayer for those who still suffer from that terrible day down to the end of the war in Afghanistan. And for those times when we have not worked diligently for peace and reconciliation in our world, in our family, and in our community, we acknowledge our sorrow for our sins. I confess to Almighty God, as you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, what I have done. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the sister of the Virgin, all the innocent saints, and you, my Lord and sister, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison.
pray. O God, eternal shepherd of your people, who tend your church in countless ways and rule over her in love, we grant, we pray, that we, your servant, priest, and bishop, who mark these days 50 years plus one as a priest, 25 years plus one as a bishop, help us to continue to serve as shepherd to your people in the manner of Christ himself. May we continue to teach your people to learn their faith, love their faith, and live their faith. And may the faith that they live be the same Catholic faith that we hold and teach coming to us from the apostles. Hear these our earnest prayers on this day of Jubilee through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. To comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness instead of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a faint spirit, they will be called Oaks of Justice, the planting of the Lord to show his glory. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Be in every situation by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you have learned or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord.
May the Lord be in your mind, in your heart, and on your lips, so that you may worthily and well proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. According to Luke. When the hour came, he took his place at table with his apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. Then a dispute broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater? The one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am in your midst as one who serves. The Gospel 
of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and dear brothers in Jesus Christ, what is the shape of the church to come? When I was very young, I never ever wanted to be a priest. I always thought that I would become a physician, an attorney, or even an actor. I would marry Beverly Ann Ponton, with whom I thought I was in love in the seventh grade. It is by a strange fate and a stranger fortune that I am a priest today. When my mother dear, Evelyn Braxton, and my beloved father, Cullen Braxton, devout Baptists, express an interest in sending their children to Catholic schools because of their reputation for excellence, their friends warned them that because of the racial divide in the Catholic Church, they should never, ever consider becoming Catholics. Nevertheless, they sent us to Catholic schools and later became Catholics in spite of painful experiences of rejection. My parents persevered and lived lives of deeply committed Catholic faith. When I was 11 years old, I told my parents that I would not live very long. Since I was in very good health, they asked, why would you say a thing like that? I told them, I said it because I know it is true. Because I already know that no one lives very long. Even if I live to be 100 years old, my life will be very short. Every human life goes by in a flash. My father said, son, you are a very old 11-year-old, wise before your time. At that early age, I knew that the sum of our journeys around the sun raced by in a flash. There was never any pressure on, my, on me by my family to consider becoming a priest. The idea of going to Quigley Seminary never crossed my mind. It was the BVM teachers, Sister Mary Antoine, Sister Mary Mildred, and my pastor, Monsignor Ryan, who encouraged me to at least think about the priesthood because they said, well, Edward, you serve Mass almost every day. You're a sacristan. And looking back, I think of my 11-year-old self musing on the unbearable lightness of being, and I realize that these were the embers 
that inflamed by my prayer, by listening to the scripture readings, by receiving the Eucharist at daily mass, these embers triggered my first thought of the priesthood. While studying at Quigley Seminary, the Second Vatican Council was unfolding in Rome under the sagacious leadership of St. John XXIII, and I was struck by Gaudium et Spes, the constitution of the church in the modern world. This constitution begins with the words Gaudium et Spes, the joys and hopes, the griefs and anguish of the people of our time, especially of those who are poor, afflicted, are the joys and hopes and griefs and anguishes of all the followers of Jesus Christ. This document played a central role in my persevering in the seminary. And many years later, Gaudium et Spes became my original Episcopal, Episcopal motto. So, on that rainy Saturday morning, May 13th, 1970, when I was ordained a priest forever, I was expressing the hope that as a minister of word and sacrament, I would play some part in the shape of the church to come. Looking back over the moving viewpoint of my life as a priest and as a bishop, I can say that while I have experienced days when I was profoundly, profoundly unhappy, there has never been a day that I was unhappy that I was a priest. By a strange fate, a stranger fortune, and a mysterious providence, this is what I was meant to be. What is the shape of the church to come? I know a wonderful, precocious, spirit-filled little girl whose name is Riley. Fifty years from now, Riley will be 57 years old. As we gather this afternoon to celebrate this Mass of Thanksgiving, it is fitting to ask, what will the Catholic Church in the United States be like 50 years from now in the summer of 2071? What is the shape of the church to come? Some say the shape of the church to come will be very different from the church of today. The number of priests will continue to decline, forcing unforeseen changes in ecclesial life and Catholic worship. There will be far fewer parishes, even fewer Catholic schools. The ministry of priests will necessarily evolve and adapt as deacons and members of the Christian faithful assume more and more positions in ministry and leadership. And the tension between the hierarchical structure of the church and consensus building community-wide decision-making will spill over into the daily life of the church. They say that women will assume new positions of responsibility. The number of practicing Catholics will be smaller and interest in ecumenism and Christian unity will all but fade away. The debate about challenging issues concerning the dignity of human life, social justice, human sexuality, the nature of marriage and the family will create opposing camps of so-called old Catholics and new Catholics. And some future pope may try to address this by convening the Third Vatican Council. But by then, the patron ministry of the Bishop of Rome will be exercised in very, very different ways. And, they say, for many reasons, the number of African American Catholics will almost certainly decline. What is the shape of the church to come? Others say the future church will not be like this at all. A renewal of Christ-centered spirituality will empower the church to challenge what Charles Taylor calls this secular age. And the number of priests and religious and sisters will dramatically increase. More and more young people will become deeply involved in the life of the church, leading to a rebirth of parish life and greater love for traditional Catholic worship. The number of practicing Catholics will grow larger and larger. New models for Catholic education will emerge and flourish. The spirituality of the Christian faithful will be stronger, and the laity will be anxious 
to give much more of their time, talent, and treasure to work for the renewal of the body of Jesus Christ. Catholics in larger numbers will embrace the church's traditional moral teachings, and the future pope will emerge with even more strength, even greater authority, in an even more centralized patrine ministry. Most of those who hope for radical changes in the Catholic Church will have long ago found some other spiritual home. Grassroots ecumenism will flourish, but the patrine ministry, the ministry of the Bishop of Rome, will remain a stumbling block to structural unity of the diverse Christian traditions. Now, this other group also thinks that, for many reasons, the number of African-American Catholics will almost certainly decline. What is the shape of the church to come? Ultimately, the shape of the church to come will be determined not by any of us, but by the provident, inscrutable reality of God's Holy Spirit. The prophet Isaiah tells us this afternoon that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon us and anoints us. Each of us must pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to discern the part we must play in determining the shape of the church to come. How can we bring the good news of Jesus to the poor, proclaim liberty to captives, and bind up the brokenhearted? It is in deep prayer that the Holy Spirit will guide you and me in fashioning the future church. St. Paul, in his letter to the Christians living in Philippi, could have been writing his letter to each one of us, to every parish in his diocese, and to all Protestant and all Catholic Christian communities as a guide for the confident spirit we must bring to the task of shaping the future church. Paul instructs us all, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything in the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the God of peace will be with you. Because of the human condition, we will move by trial and error, by success and failure, as we discern the shape of the church to come. But Paul insists that our discernment must be filled with joy and an incomparable spirit of Christian hope. Jesus of Nazareth, who is the Christ, the Son of the living God, knows well what the shape of the church to come will be. In the Gospel, Jesus instructs us that no matter how many wrong paths we may take as redeemed sinners, His living presence in the Eucharist is the blessed assurance that the shape of the church to come will be as He wills it to be. Jesus teaches us that no matter what position we may hold in the church, the leadership that will determine the shape of the church to come must necessarily be servant leadership. He tells us, know that I am in your midst as the one who serves. I am in your midst as the one who serves. Jesus' example has taught us that servant leaders must help those with whom they minister to grow as persons and become healthier, wiser, happier, freer, holier, and more other centered Servant leaders realize that they serve because they are leaders, and they are leaders because they serve. By word and deed, Jesus Christ has taught us that the shape of the church to come will be bleak indeed unless we contribute ourselves servant leadership. What is the shape? of the church to come. Let these words guide us down the unknown, grace-filled path. God has given us Jesus Christ, his Son as our Lord and Redeemer. Jesus always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deeds, he announced to the world that God is our Father and that he cares for all of his sons and for all of his daughters. Open our eyes, O Lord, 
to the needs of our sisters and brothers, inspiring us words and deeds to comfort those who labor and are burdened, make us serve them truly after the example of Jesus Christ himself and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all people, all people, may be raised up to a new hope. What is the shape of the church to come? May all people be raised up to a new hope. Praise be Jesus Christ. We now stand and proclaim the prayers that fill our hearts. We pray that the anointed by the Holy we pray that anointed by the Holy Spirit all Christians will proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ not only by what they say but also by what they do let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer We pray that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard the hearts and minds of all Christians as we prayerfully discern the shape of the church to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that all who exercise pastoral leadership in the church will imitate the servant leadership of Christ himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of the United States and the world as we pray about the terrible day, September 11, 2001, 20 years ago tomorrow, when 2,996 innocent people perished in an attack by the militant Islamic terrorist group Al-Qaeda, that we may always work for peaceful solutions to international conflicts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died on that terrible day and for their family members and friends who continue to grieve for them, that they may experience some measure of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Afghanistan, that they may find the path to peace, reconciliation, and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the refugees fleeing Afghanistan, that they may find welcome and support in other countries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis, that he may continue to guide the church with wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop Braxton. In gratitude for his 50 plus one years as a priest and his 20 plus one years as a bishop, that his ministry may continue to bear fruit and may his writings and lectures continue to bridge the racial divide in the United States and in the Catholic Church. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the members of Bishop Braxton's family who have died, especially his father, Cullen, his mother, Evelyn, his brother, Lawrence, and his sister, Gwendolyn, that they may experience the eternal life Christ has promised to those who live by his law of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord our God, you know how firmly we believe in you and dedicate ourselves to you. Hear these our afternoon prayers, grant what we seek in faith through Christ our Lord.
about what God has done for me, for me, then I will open up my Everyone I see, and I'll say that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the way. No one knows the day. It may be more night or noon, yeah. but just rest assured, time will be no more for God. He's coming real soon, my God, my God. So I will open up my heart to everyone I see. And I have to say that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the way. Oh, and I will open up my heart. I And I see yeah. Oh, I see And I'll say that Jesus Christ is the way Oh, Jesus Christ is the way Hallelujah, hallelujah Oh, I will open up my heart My heart, oh, to everyone I see, oh, I see, I see, and I will say that Jesus, Jesus Christ is all you are the way. the valley, you're the bright and morning star, yes you are, you are the way, you are the way, you are the way, I will open up my heart, my heart, yes, yes I will to everyone. is the best thing in my life
right now saying that Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ, I will open up. Jesus Christ, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the way. Hallelujah. When I think about the so good oh to everyone I No one knows the day
anybody know that Jesus Christ is the way? Jesus Christ is the way. He's the way that Jesus Christ, Jesus the way. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which we have presented to you as we mark 50 plus one years as a priest, 25 plus one years as a bishop. May this oblation become an offering that is acceptable to you. May it be of benefit to all of the people of God that we have served in the past and continue to serve in new ways. Help us to continue to be faithful to the ministry of deacon, priest, and bishop to which we have been ordained. Help us to endow your people through the Holy Spirit with the gifts they need to lead faithful lives as members of your body, the Church. Hear these our prayers over this oblation in the name of Jesus, who is Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father, of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all of your sons and daughters. Therefore, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we gather together by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scripture and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these offerings of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity amongst the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Michael, the bishop of this local church, Stanley, our bishop in residence, John, our bishop-elect, and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died. They have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Remember all of the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is ended, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Peter, with St. Thomas More, with St. Philip Nira, with St. Edward the Confessor, with St. Augustine of Hippo, and with all the saints, we shall praise you and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that, 
by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
body of Christ. Hello, how are you? May the Lord 
Bless you. Good to see you. Nice to see you again. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Good to see you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. So don't forget I'm going to need the Latin blessing at the end. I'm going to need the Latin. I'll wash my hands in the chair. Yes, the Lord, get ready to wash your hands. Let us pray. By the power of this Eucharistic sacrament, O Lord, we ask you to increase the gift of your graces in my life as your servant, a servant leader, as priest and bishop, so that we may continue to serve you and your holy people worthily, always seeking the good of the people of God and their pastoral needs. And may, after this pastoral ministry as priest and bishop is concluded, may we be given the gift of the eternal ward that you promise to your good and faithful stewards. Hear these our prayers on this day of jubilee in the name of Jesus, who is Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Dominus Vobiscum. Sid nomen Domini Benedictum. Adjutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Mm -hmm.